I the a-hole for telling my daughter she's a disappointment? I'm rethinking of having a child with my wife because of what I just found out about her dad. Am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for asking my coworker what would happen if I drank her breast milk? Am I the a-hole for asking my wife to please stop flashing her breasts to people? Would I be the a-hole if I refused to pay for my daughter's college for making fun of my stepson's injury and condition? I, 44 male, am a widow of a previous marriage and so is my wife, 42 female. She has a son, 19 male, from her previous marriage and I have a daughter, 17 female, as well. We dated for roughly five years before being married for three years now and our kids have known each other since the beginning. No major fights or weirdness besides getting to know somebody else as a parent slash guardian. My my son was a tremendous athlete in basketball, and I used to play in college at a school I'm sure none of you have heard of. Regardless, I know the ins and outs of basketball, and when he asked me to coach him, I was more than happy to. Turns out that he was good. Really good. Division one good. My wife is a controller, and I'm a pharmacist. Together, we make a very, very comfortable living, but are not rich. So when my son was getting scholarship offers for basketball, I realized we could pay for my daughter's college in full, and neither of them would have any student loan debt when they graduated. A plan that I shared with my daughter, which I think was a mistake to begin with. These plans changed when my son tried riding on someone else's motorcycle with their permission, but with zero training and got badly injured on an ensuing crash. He lost part of his hand and foot, not life threatening, but basketball ending. This happened last year and my son has been in a deep depression that we're desperately trying to bring him out of, but he feels like his entire identity got ripped away in the blink of an eye. He's been in counseling and prescribed medication, but it has not helped thus far. Recently, he confided to me that the pills he's on have unfortunate side effects with his libido to virtually zero interest and wants to stop them. I told him the important thing is that he's with us, but he can bring that up with his doctor next visit. Fast forward about two weeks. I'm upstairs looking for something in my room and I heard my daughter talking to her friends on her phone about college. The conversation turned towards her brother and she said she can't wait to be gone. I'm tired of hearing her brother cry every day and saying his hand is gross. I knew spirits in the house has shifted since he became injured, but I didn't think she felt this type of way. I was going to talk to her about this, but then I heard her say he can't even get it up while laughing. At that, I was furious. I stormed in her room, took her phone, laptop, car keys, and TV out of her room. I told her she should be ashamed of how she's talking about her brother, and he might do something permanent if he heard you talking about him like that. When my wife got home, we talked about what happened, and while she's proud of the way I stood up for my son, she thinks it's too far to all also not pay for her college since we could easily do so. Would I be the a-hole if I don't pay for my daughter's college? Personally, this would be a big deal to me if I heard my daughter talking about her brother, stepbrother, whatever you want to call it, in this way. Is it bad I would not have a problem if OP made an update that was like, yeah, well, screw you guys. I just decided not to pay for her college. Maybe this is too much of my like fuck around and find out mindset. Hey man, you fucked around and said some awful shit. You need to learn that your actions have worse consequences than just getting your stuff taken away. And this is pretty awful actions. If you are living with someone amicably and this is your feelings around them and they're supposed to be your family, I don't know, man, something went wrong. Something went very wrong. I think she needs a bigger punishment. She can't just go through life not being punished for being so cruel. Taking away paying for college is extremely severe. What I will say is I think OP is fully in their right to do so to teach their daughter a lesson, but I also think that would completely ruin their relationship, which probably isn't the goal. I don't even want to call OP the a-hole. Their parenting instincts are right. She needs a more severe punishment than just, I took away your stuff. And if it's not getting her college taken away, it needs to be something else. Don't know what that would look like. Don't know what that is. I do have to say, like, you have to give the child a chance for redemption and explain to her why it's so awful and why it's so terrible and mean. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with not the a-hole. I don't think OP's the a-hole. I think their punishment just is a little overboard, but I, I think they're doing the right thing. They need to punish this daughter, a punishment that fits the crime. My stepsitter is considered my real sister. I could never imagine saying something so horrible. I'm going to make a bold prediction. I think the daughter could potentially feel like the dad likes the son more than her, and that could hurt because she is actually OP's child, not this stepson. Because he did make a point of saying I took him under my wing and like taught him how to play basketball. There is a tiny, tiny update fairly unanimous that this would be too far. And I think I knew that, but I just can't calm down. Maybe I'm stunned that it was my own
own daughter saying it, but it's rare that I harbor something like this. Also, many comments hinting that I'm alienating or neglecting my daughter are completely unfounded. The post was about my son's condition, so I talked about my son. Maybe my daughter feels less important or neglected. I can understand that, but it's certainly not because of a lack of attention or love. I accept it though, I would be the a-hole. Drop your thoughts on this story or any other story in this video in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more reading Reddit videos and live streams every single week. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my daughter to wear her late mother's wedding dress since she will not fit into it? My late wife was a very small person. When we got married, she was only 115 pounds, so her wedding dress size reflects that. She passed away two years ago, so she cannot attend our daughter's wedding that will be in 2025. Now my daughter wants to wear the dress, and I told her it wouldn't be a good idea since she won't be able to squeeze into it. She told me she can just up the size of it, and I told her I would think about it. I looked into it, and they basically cut the dress up to size it up. I informed her, no, she can't wear the dress since they would be cutting it up. This resulted in a huge argument about me gatekeeping my wife's things. I told her no again and that she can wear some of her jewelry. She hung up. She clearly thinks I am a jerk and my sons are now on me to give up the dress. Am I the a-hole? Since it was asked twice, my wife always wanted to go dress shopping with our daughters. She loved her wedding dress and I don't think she would be okay with it being cut up. I also have a younger daughter since that was asked. Also, I am confused why a lot of comments mention my youngest is super skinny like my wife. I never said that she won't fit in the dress either more due to the fact that she's almost six feet tall oh my god hey yo why couldn't i grow that much it's obviously a sensitive situation because the wife is dead but i think you should i think it's pretty common for women to want to get married in the dress that their mom wore and to get it altered so that it'll fit them i mean like what is the husband gonna do with the dress like i get it sentimental and like you want to hold on to it but i, I don't know my gut is telling me that he's kind of being an a-hole about it clearly this is very important to the daughter to wear the dress that her mother wore? Why do you want to keep the dress? Is it a piece of your wife you're not ready to let go of yet? Does cutting it up feel like you're cutting up a memory or a keepsake? This is obviously not about the dress itself or how your wife would have felt about it, but about how you feel about it, which is okay. But don't forget, you have some time to process this. You may find yourself okay with it after more time has passed or not. It's okay to be honest about your reasons for declining, but leave the door open to your stance changing later. Info Two, how much bigger would the dress need to be sized? Like, will the dress still look more or less the same after, or will it be cut up into a whole new dress? And they edited it to say no a-holes here. OP did respond, yes to all the first questions. It really feels like I am cutting up her memory and keepsake, especially when I don't think she would want this for her dress. I'm not ready to let go of this piece of my wife and only have picture of our wedding day. I don't know my daughter's weight, but she's overweight. It would need to be sized up quite a bit. In OP's post, he was making it more about like what the wife would want but now knowing that like hey if this is important to him and he's like i need this dress for myself because i'm not completely over my wife's death and this is something that would hurt me in that healing process now that makes a lot more sense now i'm okay with being like no way holes here but probably the number one thing i say the plight of people who posted am i the a-hole is just communicate that you couldn't communicate that to an anonymous reddit thread or to your daughter either way start communicating it's not even really about like what the wife wants it's about what he wants. And like what he wants is very valid. You lost the love of your life, your wife that you had two kids with. You have a say in, hey, this dress means a lot to me and I'm not ready for it to be cut into pieces. Like maybe he just doesn't want to share like, oh, I go up to this dress every night and I cry into it. You know, <laughs> like hell yeah, man, hold on to it then. If it's sentimental to you, then hold on to it. But at no point did he really say it's sentimental to me in the original post. I'm rethinking of having a child with my wife because of what I just found out about her dad. Am I the a-hole. My wife, Jessica, 32 female, and I, 30 male, have been married for two years and are trying for a baby. Jessica has an older sister, Mary, that she isn't close to. She told me they had a huge falling out over some family drama and just don't speak anymore. I asked a few times about the entire situation, but she would say that she doesn't like talking about it and doesn't think it's important. It was Jessica's brother's birthday yesterday, and we were all over at his house to celebrate. Mary made an appearance, and there was a lot of drama. Long story short, she called Jessica and her brother's out for still associating with their dad when they know that he is a child molester. No one was paying her any mind and I was really confused on what the hell was going on. When Mary left and Jessica and I went home, I asked Jessica what the hell happened. She said that when they were kids, Mary used to claim that their dad used to molest her. I asked if it's true and Jessica was stuttering a lot. She said she knows her dad used to do bad things, but that Mary cut them all off when she turned 18 and moved out. I asked if she is admitting that she knows her dad was a child molester.
molester and did things to his own daughter. She said he doesn't do it anymore and he was just in a really bad place in his life and he apologized to Mary so there's nothing else anyone can do for Mary. I was honestly appalled. I also feel so terrible for Mary. Jessica made it seem like Mary did something wrong and deserved to be basically exiled from the family. I could have never imagined that this is what happened. I asked if she expects me to now be willing to have that man around our future children and she started shouting at me, saying I'm judging him off something that happened two decades ago and whether I like it or not, he is going to be our child's grandpa and he will be in their lives. I said if she insists on it, I think we need to hold off on having kids and have serious conversations about it. She's extremely angry at me, but I don't know how I could better react to be honest. This feels like a huge deal that she is minimizing. Am I the a-hole? I want to preface this by saying I am not defending the dad. What he did is terrible. It doesn't sound like there were any repercussions to this. Like it doesn't sound like the dad went to jail or anything like that. I do believe everyone deserves a chance at redeeming themselves. But having said that, if Mary still feels this way about the dad and all the dad did was say, I'm sorry, then I don't think he's redeemed himself. I think it's wild that your wife did not tell you this before you got married. That is a serious breach of trust, in my opinion, for you to connect yourself legally to someone for the rest of your life and they don't tell you something that could drastically affect everybody. That is a major red flag in my head. I think I have to go with not the a-hole. I think they should do a little bit more digging and try to see if there's maybe not a solution, but like if there's more to this truth, if there's more information about it. I think a hard stance here about not having kids and if Jessica isn't okay with the kids being around her dad, then you gotta go. You gotta divorce. I asked if she's admitting that she knows that her dad was a child molester and did things to his own daughter. She said he doesn't do it anymore and he was just in a really bad place in his life and he apologized to Mary so there's really nothing else anyone can do for Mary. Okay, if we're operating under the assumption that this is 100% true, I wouldn't even take the chance. Yoink the possibility of having kids right there. And if the wife isn't okay with going completely no contact with the dad, divorce. I think everyone deserves a second chance, but they don't deserve the assumed trust that comes before the second chance. If this was just a normal grandpa, they deserve the trust that they're going to handle that kid in a proper way. He doesn't deserve that trust. Like he lost that. Am I the a-hole for kicking out my girlfriend and her son after she invited her ex into our home? Me, 35 male, and my girlfriend, Sarah, 35 female, have been together for four years. She has a son, Nathan, nine male, with her ex, Mark, 36 male. Sarah has full custody of Nathan with her ex having scheduled visitations one weekend of every month. Sarah and Nathan moved in with me a little over a year and a half ago, and in my perspective, it was a little rocky at first. I've always been pretty protective of my space, so making room for two other people was difficult for me. When Sarah moved in with me, we agreed that the visitations for Mark would be held in our apartment as long as I'm home. The main reason I wanted this is because I don't know Mark that well, and I don't want him wandering around our apartment without me there. When we proposed this idea to Mark, he was fine with it. Now, moving on to the real issue. Three weeks ago marked four months since Mark's last visit, so I had asked Sarah when he was planning on visiting Nathan. My girlfriend replied by shrugging her shoulders and telling me she'd ask. She never followed up with it, so a few days ago I asked when Mark's next visit was, and Sarah said she'd tell me when she knew. Nathan was in the living room, but had apparently overheard us and shouted something along the lines of, Dad was here last weekend, remember? Sarah's face immediately dropped, and when I asked what Nathan meant, she wouldn't give me a direct answer. Eventually, she ended up telling me that for the past two visits, Mark had been to our apartment when I was working. When I accused her of going back on our agreement, she kept telling me this was her home too, and she could invite whoever she wanted, and that it was fine because she was here and watching. I told her that was besides the point, and she violated my trust. It blew up into a huge argument, which ended in me telling her to get out of my apartment. She packed up and left with Nathan. Last I heard, she was staying with her parents. I've gotten several messages from both Sarah and her parents calling me an a-hole for kicking Sarah and Nathan out of their home for something so small. She's even been blasting me on Instagram and Facebook about how horrible I am to do this to her. It's got me thinking I might be the a-hole, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Am I the a-hole? Absolutely not. I think the, the key thing
living in here, you set a boundary in your home. She also lives there too, but she moved into your own space. On top of that, she was just straight up lying to him. Well, if you can lie about something so huge, this guy who for some reason only has visitation once a month, which is also big red flag. But now this guy is in my house without my supervision. Big no, not the a-hole. I can see why it's important, but the court order was instructed because of Mark having a criminal record. I'm not sure what it's for as Sarah has never directly told me and I didn't want to push her to tell me. That would be a deal breaker for me. I feel like if somebody's going to be in my home who has a criminal record and can't even see their own kid because of it, I wouldn't even have let that happen in the first place. I would have been like, bro, either you tell me so I'm aware or this person is never allowed in my house ever. Guys, stand up for yourself. Hold your boundaries. Don't let shitty people do shitty things to you. Am I the a-hole for refusing to be paired up with the Down syndrome kid? I'm 16 female and I am in a special class in my high school for special needs students. It's not purely for disabled kids, but mostly for people 16 to 20 who had drug or mental health problems that led them to dropping out of school. There's one kid in the class, Daniel, 17 male, and he has Down syndrome. I have an autoimmune condition that makes me miss a lot of school because I'm in the hospital and I use a cane or a walker. Our class coordinator, Brenda, likes to get us to do different activities during the day because our classes are structured differently from the rest of the school, mostly trying to get us to socialize by doing activities like board games or helping out in the school canteen. Daniel and I are the only two physically disabled students in the class, and because of this, we keep getting paired up. I hate it. He's really rude to me and will do stuff like take my cane and give it to his other friends because he thinks it's funny. I've told Brenda that he won't quit harassing me, and I don't want to be left alone with him. But she just tells me I'm being prejudiced against his condition and lying about it because he has downs and not a mean bone in his body. I'm now refusing to do anything with him and walked out of the kitchen when we were both rostered. Am I the a-hole for this? Everyone keeps saying that people with downs don't know how to be mean, so I don't know if this is actually discriminatory. Maybe they aren't able to pick up on the social cue, but just because you aren't able to pick up on the social cue doesn't mean that you're not doing a mean thing. I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. To just like pair somebody with that and be like, huh, that's your problem. This person is also disabled and they're taking the thing that helps with their disability? I feel so bad for OP. Why is the adult letting this happen? Exactly. Why isn't OP going to her mom and being like, this person who's supposed to be like the teacher is being a shitty teacher? I feel like at that point, I just want to be homeschooled. Not the a-hole. I feel like what he's doing and his condition aren't related. Working with him is making her school life worse, so she shouldn't be forced to do so. Absolutely. Not the a-hole. You don't ever put up with being mistreated to that degree. It's more able to excuse that behavior than to call it out at that point. Am I the a-hole for forcing my kid to get a job even though it hurts her social life at school? My daughter Sophia is 16 and she goes to a private school that a lot of the richer families send their kids. My wife works there so we get a huge discount on the price. I would prefer to send the kids to a public school but our school district sucks a lot so private it is. I truly don't know how the kids act at that school. The best way is that they are snobby. My breaking point for this was my son sent a video of my daughter being extremely rude to a fast food worker. My wife and I discussed it and we agreed she needed to get a job so she will understand that those people deserve respect and how awful it feels for a customer to be a jerk. So she has been working at Target and dealing with all the customers. She hates it and it got out in school she has a job. This resulted in people not inviting her out like they used to since she is lame for having a job. My wife wants to let her quit her job and we got in an argument about it. I think it's better she learns they were never her friends in the first place and she should keep her job. My wife thinks I'm an unfair jerk and Sophia hates me at the moment. I don't want to go with you're the a-hole by any means. Something here is not right. The fact that your daughter would even do that from the start, honestly, in my opinion, it kind of sounds like you need to get your daughter out of there. Go to a different school that isn't this private school where everyone treats them like ass. Look at some charter schools. I went to a charter school and I loved it. The environment she's currently in is not healthy. There has to be a better solution than this. Any environment where they think that you're lame for just getting a job is not a good environment. I would not want my kids hanging out with someone like that. I don't think it's a parenting problem necessarily. I think it's an environment problem. But I will say it is the parent's responsibility to take her out of that environment and put her in a better one and educate her. It's not okay to make fun of somebody for working a job and make her realize she doesn't want to be around those types of people. Am I the a-hole for not telling my cousin's girlfriend I was on my period? To preface this, me, female 23, and my cousin, male 25, have always been really close. We are both only children and grew up three houses down from each other. When we were young, we started this tradition of having movie marathons once a month. We're both huge nerds. Today we live about an hour 
away from each other in different cities, but we've kept up with our tradition. We take turns holding a movie marathon day slash night, and this time it was my cousin's turn to host it. My cousin lives in a three room apartment with his girlfriend, female 26, and I've always gotten along with her as far as I'm aware. This would be the first time she was home during one of our marathons, but I didn't mind if she joined us. Like I said, I thought we were good. It was that time of month for me, but I didn't think much about it. I had pads with me and I had my own beddings at my cousin's place, as well as a towel to sleep on in case of an accident. I usually sleep on the couch in my cousin's office when I visit, so no big deal. The day went great. We had decided to watch some Star Trek and his girlfriend would check on us from time to time, but stated that she wasn't a fan of sci-fi. The morning after, I was woken up by yelling and quickly got up to see what was going on. Turns out the girlfriend had found one of my used pads in the bathroom trash can and she wasn't happy about it. She came at me quite aggressively and asked why I hadn't told her that I was on my period and how gross it was that I just threw my pads in the trash. Now I'm not the most zen person, so I did raise my voice at her, asked her what the F she was on about and why it was such a big deal. She started crying and even though my cousin didn't ask me to, I felt I should leave. Took an early train home and now I'm sitting in my apartment getting bombarded by messages. I've gotten some harsh texts from the girlfriend's friends and even a couple of family members telling me I should have told her I was on my period and I was an a-hole for yelling at her and making her cry. I've been known to be pretty ignorant when it comes to social cues and norms, so I might be completely wrong in this, but I wanted to get some opinions from some strangers on the internet before I do any apologizing. I don't know, is that normal? Ladies in the chat, is that normal? Are you supposed to like go over to people's places and be like, hey, by the way, I'm on my period. It's not their business. I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. What is people's problem with period blood? If it's in the trash, are you digging your hands to the trash regularly or something? Like, what? who cares? What does she want her to do with it? Put it in your purse. Update, I talked to my cousin and he explained what happened before I woke up. Apparently, his girlfriend had asked him if he knew I was on my period because she had seen my pad in the trash can. Yes, I wrapped it up before throwing it away. My cousin said something like, oh, that's why OP hogged all the chocolate. We should have some painkillers if she needs them, but knowing OP, she probably brought a whole pharmacy with her. This set his girlfriend off. Apparently, she asked him why he was okay with that and why he was so casual with it. He replied that it's not like it's something weird and unnatural. That's when she started screaming and when I came out. Some more info. One, her friends contacted me through Facebook Messenger so they didn't have my number. Two, the trash can had a lid on it. Three, the family members that reached out to me about the situation aren't people I'm very close to. Four, my cousin's at work right now, but he said he will have a discussion with his girlfriend once he gets home and get back to me later. Update two, some of you in the comments already pointed it out, but it wasn't really about me having my period. The GF confessed she was jealous of our movie marathons and that she thought it was childish. Apparently, she also somehow convinced herself I was hooking up with my cousin in some way. Huh? If that was the case, why is the period the straw that broke the camel's back on this. That's my last fucking straw. She had her period in our house. Some of her friends had pointed out how weird it was for me and my cousin, a man and a woman, to meet up that often and spend the night together. I'm not really sure what she was smoking because first of all, we're cousins. And second of all, she has met my current girlfriend. Yes, folks, I'm 100% a lesbian. So even though I can admit my husband's quite a catch, I'm not interested in that kind of fish. I'm not really sure what she hoped to achieve by bringing my period into it, but she and my cousin had a huge fight and she left to stay with her parents for a while. My cousin reassured me our monthly movie nights would continue, but he needed some time to sort himself and the situation out. Now that we have the backstory, it makes like this much more sense, but still, it's just like, it's dumb. It just sounds like the, the girlfriend is extremely insecure for her to think that this person is hooking up with their cousin, unless OP is keeping things from us about how they act together. But I mean, like OP is lesbian. Like I, <laughs> am I the a-hole for not putting away Nair in my shower while sister's kids are here? My sister's family are staying with us because our brother is getting married. They're using my bathroom while they're here. I keep a bottle of Nair in my shower. My niece, age six, used it as shampoo. She didn't know what it was, and the words hair remover are small to be fair, and she's not the best reader. She didn't have it in long enough to remove all of her hair, but it has a few patches missing. The hair that's still there is this awful texture and is brittle. My sister is thinking they're going to have to cut it off, and my niece is really upset because she doesn't want to lose her hair. She's supposed to be the flower girl at the wedding, by the way. My sister says it's my fault and is really mad at me for leaving it in the shower and in reach of her kids. She says I should have known better than to have stuff like this around when there are little kids around. I told her I don't know why she would think that. I don't have kids and I haven't even watched kids before. She said it was obvious and I'm either being an idiot or vindictive because I had to give up my room, which isn't true. I didn't like having to give up my room, but I didn't try to make her daughter bald. It's an accident. I would go with no a-holes here. I just think it's like too many stars aligned 
mind and something bad really happened. Yeah, he probably could have put the bottle of Nair away, but like it wouldn't be on the top of my mind either. Honestly, if it's anybody's quote unquote fault, I would say it's the parents. A six year old to me still needs like maybe not supervision, but still needs like a little bit of help when they're like showering. If you're going to take your kids to travel, bring their shampoo, conditioner, all that and set them up with it in the shower. Not the a-hole as a parent, it is my responsibility to make sure any home I bring my kids to is childproof. While my kids were showering alone by six, they would have been using products we brought and not products left behind in someone else's home. They would have known better not to touch things that didn't belong to them. And I, as a diligent parent, would have seen it when I went into the strange bathroom with them to help them get undressed, turn on the water, etc. You shouldn't be blamed for her poor parenting skills. Am I the a-hole for asking my coworker what would happen if I drank her breast milk? My 20 female coworker, Kate, had a baby a while ago. And in the break room during lunch yesterday, she was talking about breastfeeding. During the conversation, I asked Kate, hey, so what would happen if I were to drink your breast milk? Kate said, excuse me. I did realize that it sounded like a weird question when you didn't hear the train of thought leading up to it. So I tried to explain myself and said, I mean, is it okay because your baby is related to you, but I'd get sick because I don't have your same bacteria. Kate didn't answer me, but our other coworker, Lauren said, well, it can't be that that's how it works because then wet nurses wouldn't have been a thing. I've never heard of a wet nurse and asked Lauren, what's that? Lauren said, it's when you hire a nanny who had a baby at the same time as you so that she can also breastfeed your baby for you, but it's like an old timey thing. So at this point, Kate said, you guys are being dicks and left. I found out today that she's telling people that me and Lauren were making fun of her about breastfeeding. So I do understand why Kate would have been uncomfortable with the first way I asked the question, because yes, that was kind of a stupid way to say it, but I don't really understand how she thinks I was making fun of her at all after that. Am I the a-hole? Wow, they labeled this one a-hole? I wouldn't call OP the a-hole. You gotta check the things that you say before you say them. It doesn't sound like they were making fun of her. Kate coming out of this being like, you guys were making fun of me. They weren't. So in that aspect, I wouldn't even call OP the a-hole. The part that maybe there's an argument that OP is the a-hole is if she'd come out and been like, yo, OP asked me this really weird question about drinking my breast milk, which then I wouldn't even call OP an a-hole, but just more like, hey, OP, phrase your words better. Look, some thoughts just don't need to be shared with others. You asked a gross and weird question, and I'm not entirely sure why you even thought she'd want to answer or necessarily know the answer. You seem to be trying to creep her out on purpose, which she took as making fun of her. You're the a-hole. Next time, just ask Google your weird questions. I don't think that question in general is weird, especially if she's already talking about breastfeeding. The weird part was when he said, if I drink your breast milk and didn't add context to it. We got an update. First, I guess I need to explain a couple of things that people missed in my first post. Mainly, I am 20 female, even though most people were for some reason assuming that I was a guy. And also, like I said in the post, I understood in the first place that I worded my initial question to Kate badly. Not gonna lie, I was assuming it was a guy. I think that does change things a little bit that OP is a female. Less creepy, still creepy, but less creepy than if a dude had asked. The thing that I didn't understand was how it seemed like I was making fun of Kate. I do understand now after people explain and after what Kate said when I did talk to her about it, that it was because it just didn't seem like a question that anyone would ask seriously. So on Friday afternoon, I went to Kate and told her, hey, I wanted to say sorry about yesterday. I get now that I asked a really inappropriate question and I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable. And I understand that you feel like I was making fun of you, but that wasn't my intention. And I'm sorry it came out sounding that way. Kate said, okay, hold on. You were really just trying to ask about the germs and milk or whatever it was. I said, yeah, I know it sounded bad, but I swear that's all I meant. Kate said, well, if it was a genuine question, then I'm sorry. Also, I shouldn't have assumed ill intent. I said, it's okay. Like I said, I am sorry. Kate said, don't worry about it. And then that was the end of the conversation and everything seemed fine. Okay, so it was just a miscommunication. I'm glad they figured it out. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she's a disappointment? I have two daughters, 23 female, 20 female. They are both so beautiful and smart and I really love them both. I always wanted them to be strong and independent women who could stand on their own feet and I tried to raise them that way. They were both interested in volleyball. I always supported their interest. My younger is still playing in a team and also studying at a good university. She is really hardworking and even if she does not succeed in playing professional volleyball, she will definitely have a good job. My older daughter quit both sports and school when she got pregnant at the age of 18. When she first told us that she was pregnant, I was very upset and advised her to have an abortion because having a child at such a young age would disrupt her life. She did not want to have an abortion and my wife supported her decision. To be honest, I was very insistent on her having an abortion at the time, but when I saw that she remained determined, I dropped the issue and supported her fully, even though I didn't want to. She got married quickly with the baby's father. Then she decided to stay at home and take care of her child and her husband started to work. I never wanted my daughter to be financially dependent on her husband, but I have never
never voiced it either. But of course, my daughter knows that I'm bothered by this. Yesterday, we were having dinner with my daughters and my wife. My wife and daughter started talking about being a mother. My wife told her that even though I wanted her to have an abortion, I love my grandson very much now. My daughter asked me if that was so, and I said, of course I love him. I really love my grandson, but my daughter knew that I was bothered by her situation, so it didn't sound sincere at all. My daughter said I could give an honest answer. I told her that I really love my grandson, but that I was disappointed that she had become a mother at such an early age, had left school, and her job was now dependent on a man. She didn't argue with me, but the rest of the night was a bit tense. At the end of the night, she went home and my wife started a fight over what I said. I told her that she was the one who wanted an honest answer, but my wife is sure that I'm an a-hole. My younger one agrees with me, but she says I was rude to say it out loud. I'm not sorry that my daughter doesn't live the life I want. I'm sorry that she lives dependent on another person, and I can't say that their marriage is going very well. My daughters chose the sport they wanted to be interested in, the university they wanted to go to, or their hobbies, etc. I didn't force anything on them. All I want is for them to be self-sufficient. I also told my daughter that I would pay for a babysitter if she wanted to go back to school or get a job. Yes, she is only 23 years old and could still have a career, but she's not doing that. In the second edit, I posted it in the comments. I said I would apologize to my daughter, which I did. It was a long conversation, but I don't have the time today, so I can't go into detail. Also, no matter how much I go into detail, some people here seem to be very interested in making things up, so it will be a wasted effort. In short, I apologize and explained to her that I am more worried than disappointed. Thankfully, she understood. Understood. I reminded her again that I love her and will always be there for her. Also, my suspicions about their marriage turned out to be correct. They don't have a good marriage. Her husband has suggested therapy, but she doubts it will work. This time, I didn't tell her what to do. I told her that I would support her in whatever she does. I told her that if she wants to go back to school or work, my offer or babysitter still stands. And if she wants more from me, I will always do it. So I'm still the best father ever. After just reading the first part, I was actually leaning towards not the a-hole. The daughter wanted to know his opinion. And I think he would actually be more of an a-hole for not wanting more from his daughter out of her life. Obviously, this is the path that she chose, but I think it's a relatively reckless path. Not saying that it can't pan out, not saying that it's what she wants, but there are a lot of people who take this type of path and they have a not so great life, not only for themselves, but then also for that kid. It sounds like the dad is giving his daughters as much opportunity as he can. He's more disappointed that his daughter isn't taking advantage of that opportunity. Like a lot of people wish they could have a support system them like this, but the daughter is not really taking advantage of it. It's not like he was going out of his way to tell his daughter that the way she's living her life is wrong. It sounds like the dad is being very respectful and accepting and understanding of the situation. You can do that and give your opinions about it, especially when the daughter asked for it. He sounds like a caring dad who's not overbearing. If this dad was every single day telling her how she should live her life, then I think he's the a-hole, but he's willing to accept her situation while still saying, saying, I would have wanted better for you. And I think that's as best as you can ask from a parent. Being disappointed in her decision and calling her a disappointment is a huge difference. That's actually a very good point, Eve. Let's rewind, shall we? What did he say? I told her that I really love my grandson, but that I was disappointed that she had become a mother at an early age, had left school and her job, and was now dependent on a man. So he didn't say, I'm disappointed in you. He said, I'm disappointed off the decisions that you've made, which I guess you could argue is kind of the same thing. But I think if they would have been like, you're a disappointment. That's a lot harsher than I'm disappointed in the general route that you took because I knew that you had more in you, I guess is a good way to put it. Prince of Darkness said, yeah, I disagree with Reddit here. OP is not the a-hole. Wouldn't call him an a-hole, but would call him insensitive for sure. I think there's an argument for that. I don't know. Like, are you insensitive for telling them the truth? They asked for it. Could they have lied and kept the happiness? Sure. But personally, that's not the route that I would want to go down. I'm going to give you some serious advice and hope you listen to it, OP. I am the daughter in this situation. I got pregnant when I was 16. Was it a great idea? Absolutely not. But once the decision was made, it was done. Well, my mom was exactly like you, consistently bringing things up like how she thought my life would be different. She was disappointed I became such a young mother. She had such bigger plans for me. It's a, such a shame I didn't listen to her when she told me to abort, et cetera, et cetera, for years. Well, guess what? Now I'm 37. I'm happy and successful, and my daughter's 21 now, and one of the best people literally on the planet. But guess who I haven't spoken to in four years because I got so tired of listening to crap over the years? That's right, my mom. If you value a relationship with your daughter and grandson, it is time to let go of the dreams you had of her life and focus on being a supportive and kind part of the life she has now. I think it's a bigger red flag. If you have a parent who you get pregnant at 16 to 18 and the parent is like, yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Like, I, I, I think that's worse. If you have a parent that is condoning that and supporting that and not at least a little bit like, are you sure? Where this parent goes wrong is they're then giving unsolicited opinions afterwards. From this post, it doesn't sound like OP was like, every time he saw 
his daughter like, oh, look at this grandson. You could have aborted him and had a better life and been an independent mom. And it sounds like he was like, you know what? I have these feelings, but I've accepted it. This is how it is. And I'm just going to make the situation as best as possible. But then the daughter asked for his opinion and he just gave his honest opinion. I think that's where this is different. I don't think this is wrong. You can disagree with someone on something and still continue a relationship with them as long as both people are being respectful and not trying to force their opinions or their feelings or trying to manipulate one another. Like as much as the dad has to be understanding of the daughter, his daughter needs to understand that this isn't the vision that they had for me. I need to work with them to get them to understand the benefits of the life that I've chosen and communicate that. It's not just like the parents have to move over to the kid's side because I think a lot of what parents argue or what they believe does have some merit to it. Am I the a-hole for asking my wife to please stop flashing her breasts to people? My 32 male, wife 30 female, and I have been together 11 years, married for just over five years. Ever since I met her in college, she has been insecure about her appearance, specifically her body. When we got our first jobs out of college and became financially stable, she approached me and asked how I felt about her getting a boob job. To be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the idea. I told her I loved her how she is and that I don't think she needed one. Also, just personal preference, I've never really liked fake boobs. I just think they look oddly perky and not natural. And I've dated women in the past with varying chest size and would prefer a woman with small slash no tits compared to someone with fake boobs. They always looked bolted on to me. But knowing how much it has bothered her, I told her I would support her decision either way. After thinking about it for a while, she approached me again to say that if I was still serious with my answer, that I would support her either way, she was going to proceed with the operation as it's been something that has affected her self-esteem for a long time. I wasn't sure how to feel about it at first. I thought about talking her out of it, but I wanted to stand by my original answer and support her either way. In 2021, after COVID settled down and elective procedures were taking place again, she went and got a boob job. I will say her surgeon was fantastic and things did end up looking very good considering my prior opinion. The problem I've had is ever since she's gotten her boob job, it's definitely emboldened her to put them on display, so to speak. She went from wearing baggy and unrevealing clothing to very tight and revealing shirts with a lot of cleavage. I had dated bigger chested women in the past, so I was pretty used to it. It just threw me off in the beginning. One thing that I'm not adjusting well to is her over willingness to show people her bare breasts. It's no secret to anyone that has known her for a long time that she got a boob job. At first, it was mostly her just showing her girlfriends, which was still weird to me, but didn't really cross a boundary for me. However, it's almost as if the more and more she's shown them off and gotten validation, the more and more enabled she is to continue doing it. The first time it crossed a boundary for me was when we were at a friend's house for dinner and drinks, and she had a little too much to drink and showed her girlfriend her breasts while her girlfriend's husband was standing right there. We fought in the car about it on the way home. Next morning, I tried to set boundaries with her, but she dismissed it and shook it off like I was being controlling. Most recently, we were at a friend's house with many other mutual friends watching a football game, and she got drunk again. Upon our team scoring in walk-off fashion, she lifted her shirt and flashed her breasts at the entire party while jumping up and down in celebration. She's not even a football fan and hardly understands who to cheer for. To me, it was like an excuse to just show off her breasts to everyone without their consent might I add. I was livid and again we fought about it. She got defensive and turned it around on me saying that for once in her life she's happy with how she looks and she just wants to feel good about herself. I again tried expressing my boundaries but she completely dismissed them. We have been short with each other for a week since that's happened. It may sound ridiculous but if she can't respect my feelings and my boundaries this could be grounds for divorce. I know that might sound dramatic but I've expressed I'm not okay with it and she dismisses me constantly. Am I the a-hole for insisting that my wife stop showing her breasts off. As much as I didn't want to be on OP's side when I started reading this, I'm kind of on OP's side. It's one thing if she's showing them in a manner that's like, oh yeah, I got the boob job. Are you curious about it? Would you like to see it? Asking her husband first, like, is it okay if I show them my boobs? I think that would be okay. If she's asking permission, making sure that everybody is okay with it, yeah. But the fact that she's doing it without other people's consent, dismissing the husband's boundaries, I'm kind of going with not the a-hole. I will say, especially 
the beginning, the way the husband was talking about the wife was throwing me off. I wasn't a huge fan of the way that he, he made everything about him and how he felt, not like, maybe if your wife still feels like this, you're probably not giving her enough validation. Maybe she's looking for somebody to appreciate them because the husband isn't. In this particular situation, my wife is flashing our friends without their consent, and this is crossing my boundaries in our marriage. Have to go with not the a-hole. But personally, I do think OP is probably a little bit an a-hole in terms of how he interacts with his wife. If you enjoyed, click right here to watch another one of my Reddit videos, and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on new messy Reddit threads every week. Mwah.